This has got to be one of my favourite places. It's Tenby, Pembrokeshire in West Wales. Absolutely beautiful down there. And uh, I took this picture on a recent visit on the harbour side, as we can see. Lovely boats, nice lighting coming through here. And uh, you can see some really colourful buildings coming round the outside of the harbour. But if we take a little bit of a closer look, you can see just on the side of the picture here, we've got somebody just sat right on the edge of the frame. I've got the hand tool selected, so if I press Command or Control, brings up the zoom tool, we can zoom in. Let's take a look. There's that person sat there. There's a car dying to get in on the action. We also have some uh, CCTV cameras there as well. Looking at the rest of the picture, just clicking down, dragging the way through. That looks pretty good as it is. I'm going to use Command-0, Control-0 to go back out to fit on screen. So the first thing we're going to do with this picture is crop it. So, coming across, let's pick up the crop tool. Got the crop tool selected. I've got no restrictions. That will allow us to make a free crop. That means, yeah, I know you don't have to pay for it, but the fact that you can sort of crop it to any size or any ratio entirely up to you. So with a free crop, we can drag it down, cross to the other side of the image there, now perhaps using the grab handle, actually lined it up quite nicely, but using the grab handle you can bring that through into this part, just going to go for that pink bucket and just perhaps a little bit more, that should do nicely there. I just want to keep these people here right on the edge of the frame. Like the look of that, you can press enter, return or click the green tick which will apply the crop. Right, looking at the picture. Looks a little bit dark in some areas, so what we're going to do now is brighten up the shadow areas of the picture. My favourite way of doing that has got to be, first of all, using Command or Control J to duplicate the background layer. Next, we're going to come up to the Enhance menu. Now, with the Enhance menu, we're going to drop down to Adjust Lighting. We're going to go across to Shadow and Highlights. Clicking on this opens the Shadow and Highlights dialog box. You can see the difference. Preview is checked, so you can see it on the image, and look at the difference that makes already. Just the sort of look I'm after. But you can grab hold of these, play with the sliders, see what they do, whack it across, and you can see if you take it up like this, you get a very much... Uh, pseudo HDR style image, you can darken down the shadows, you can come in, you can play with the midtone, and yeah, alright, don't like it, gone too far. If you don't like anything you've done with any of the panels, press Alt or Option, now press Alt or Option, you'll notice Cancel becomes Reset, click on Reset, it resets it to its default settings. So let's just take a look, little sort of bit more of a serious look at this like this area here, just perhaps a little bit too bright in some of the shadow areas, so I'm going to drop down the light and shadows just very slightly, perhaps to that area there, looks pretty good. Want to keep a little bit of depth in the shadows there. Dark and highlights, uh, not so sure, it gives a bit of a murky look to the sky there, so I'm going to leave that as it is. It's just the light and shadows that I'm after with this picture. Looks good, click OK to that. Right, next job. Now, Tembi is quite famous, no, should I say really famous, for the view you've got across to the harbour with all these colourful buildings here. So I want to bring through colour to these buildings. I don't want to do it to the boats in the harbour because you can see they're, they're really colourful as it is. And if we just use uh, Shadow, Shadow, we've just used that one, haven't we? Yeah, if we just use Hue and Saturation, it's going to increase the saturation in these colours as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of selective hue saturation. We're going to pick up the lasso tool. This is the freehand lasso. I'm going to click down. I'm going to draw it around the buildings. Well, it's more dragging it around rather than drawing it around. So dragging it around the buildings like this, off the edge of the picture, down, coming around the harbour side. They'll be pretty good. Across the beach, quick paddle as we go. Round the other side, across the harbour, down, round. So we get a pink bucket and up the other side. There is our selection. Now with our selection. We're going to drop down and we're going to click on this little black and white icon. This is for an adjustment layer. With the adjustment layer it's off the screen but it's hue saturation I am heading for. When I click on this you'll notice that the selection has disappeared. But taking a look at the layers panel you can see the selection has now gone into the mask. White is the area we're working on. Black is the areas which are now going to be shaded so it's only going to apply to the white areas. Let's come and take a look. In the adjustment panel, 
the hue saturation if we grab hold of this now the great thing with the uh, adjustment layers is they're totally non-destructive they're also fully adjustable so you can come into this we can take it up and you can see that's what we're working on but I'm not going to worry we're not destroying any pixels because it is totally non-destructive I'm going to drop this down though till we come to that sort of area there that looks pretty good let's just click on the little eye icon nice subtle change but you can see the difference as we that's without it that's with it like the look of that job done but we've got quite a hard selection you can actually see the selection and you can see the mask bring your cursor over the mask area here so you're on top of the mask press the alt or the option key now hold down that alt or option click on the mask there it is right to give this a bit of feather because we didn't feather the selection what we're going to do next is go to filter drop down to blur we're going to go to stay we're going to go to gaussian blur and we're going to blur it by pretend you didn't see that bit uh, because if you drag it out you can click on the edge you can see it there preview is checked as well so you will see it happening on the main image but the more we drag the radius across we're now starting to blur it by increasing the radius by 3.4 you can see the effect that's having dragging it up there you know sort of blurring it by 12.2 and if we whack it right the way up at 67 you can see it happening on the main image now that area there looks pretty good we're going to click OK to that so that has blurred our selection you can see it looks pretty good I know you can't see anything at the moment click on the little eye icon will pop the mask back and there it is right for the next stage you'll notice when we're in the um, what was it the shadow and highlights yeah, I wanted to sort of have a look at this sky I wanted to give a little bit more emphasis to the sky and using the dark and highlights didn't really work so we're going to use this selection and you're thinking what selection well it's still there it's on the mask so if you come up to the adjustment layer mask here press command or control you can see the way the cursor changes click down there's the selection around the houses but I don't want the houses we want the sky so we're going to go to select inverse so we've now inverse the selection but I don't want the area with the boats in yeah talk about being fussy coming up to the menu bar when we got our lasso tool that's the freehand lasso tool we're going to come up we're going to click on the third one in this is the subtract from selection as the prompt is telling us if I just bring down my cursor there it is you can see it there with the little sort of crosshairs with the little minus symbol so I can click in I can drag it right the way around the outside up around the top like this cross and uh, through to we come to the other side that has got rid of the selection we are now just working on the area of the sky okay we're going to drop down we're going to click on this icon again for an adjustment layer this time we're going to go for levels and when levels opens you can see and uh, yeah you can see there's some of the lighter pixels missing there just a thin trail coming through darker pixels definitely missing thin trail there again let's just take a look there it is with the mask you can see the white area this is what we're working on black that's what's hidden right so let's just come back to the adjustment layer now there's a few tricks because just how much should you bring this in by should you bring it in by that amount should you bring you know it it really does it's a little bit difficult trying to work out exactly how much you bring it in by but the trick is if you press the alt or the option key now hold down that alt or option the sky goes black over Tempe and if anybody says yeah it is every time I go there it rains no it's not you can see the sun's out this time bringing this across as you begin to bring it across you can see that little white area just popping through you'll notice it's masked as well so we don't need to feather it what you need to do is avoid the whites where it is sort of white like this this is where it is blown in the highlights if I just release the alt or the option key you can see it's uh, sadly lacking in detail in the white area so bringing this back to that point there should be pretty good releasing it and there it is coming across we're going to repeat the process with the dark pixels going to click down press alt or option you'll now notice we've got a white sky bringing this in and the color we need to avoid this time is black and you can see it just happening on the gable end of this building here so I'm just going to click down drag it back into that area there that point release it and there it is clicking on the eye icon you can see that's the before that's the after and you can see we've really brought the detail out of that sky right let's take a look there it is 
in layers save it in layers now go to file go to save as and you're going to save it as whatever you want to call it I'm going to call it Tembi because that's where it is but the important thing is is to make sure you save it as a Photoshop file in other words you can save it as a PSD file as it obviously didn't like the name I called it so I'm going to call it Tembi again there it is choose the uh, file or folder you're going to put it in and click save because once you've saved it in layers with adjustment layers you can always double click on this you can always come in you can make adjustments to it you can change things further it really is a great way of working so go on give it a try but until the next time it's happy imaging and take care